Open your Bibles, please, to Hebrews chapter number 12. And I want to talk to you from this subject, Run the Race of Faith with Joy. Run the Race of Faith with Joy. In chapter number 12, verse number 1, It says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Father, thank you for your word today. The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. So you know every need in this room. You know every need of those who are watching today. And I'm asking you to minister by your spirit. Holy Spirit, you authored this book. So grant life, sir. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. When we see something repeated, and we've learned this Um, in our Bible studies, when we see something repeated over and over, generally there's emphasis. That means we should pay attention to that thing. Um, When we look in this, um, looking at the book of Hebrews, there's a phrase that's used in chapter number 10 where it says, now the just shall live by faith. I say it's repeated because not only is it in the book of Hebrews, but it's also in Galatians. The just shall live by faith. It's in Romans. The just shall live by faith. And for the Old Testament people, it is in the book of Habakkuk. The just shall live by faith. So I think we can surmise that Old Testament and New, there's an expectation of God for us to live by faith. But we hear that, but the question is not just living by faith, but how do we do it? How do we walk that out? What does that mean in terms of living by faith? Where, how is that um, manifested or materialized or walked out in my life, in our lives? I believe as we look at this particular scripture in Hebrews, I believe we're going to have some insight, gain some insight that's going to help us to live by faith and run this race with joy, run this race of faith with joy. Amen. And so, um, the first thing he says is this. It starts with, therefore. And what I found out, being as smart as I am, I need to find out what it's there for. And so he says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Wait a minute. Stop right there. He's referring to chapter number 11, what we would commonly call the hall of faith, and he begins to reference all of those witnesses who walk by faith. And he says, since we are surrounded by them. And so the first thing I want to tell you is this in terms of how do you run this race of faith with joy is to listen to the witnesses. Say that with me, please. Listen to the witnesses. So he begins to talk in chapter number 11 about Abel. Abel worshipped by faith. He spoke of Enoch. Enoch walked by faith. Noah worked by faith. Abraham obeyed by faith. Listen to this. Sarah bore a child by faith. Isaac and Jacob blessed the next generation by faith. Moses refused 
royal privileges. And y'all know that's difficult. Israel passed through the Red Sea by faith. And the Jericho walls fell by faith. And what I want you to understand is this. When we start talking about the testimonies or listening to the witnesses is this. Those witnesses are speaking to us and said, look, let me tell you what God did for me. He can do that for you too. Let me tell you how this worked out in my life. He can work that out in your life too. And what we have to understand is this. Not only are there witnesses from a biblical perspective, but I dare you to look down your row. There are some witnesses in this room today who can say, baby, I've seen God come through and do amazing things in my life. Pastor, give me the mic. I need about a day to tell of what God has done for me. And the truth of the matter is you can, you, you, you can tell somebody, just keep going because God God is going to see you through. God is going to come through. I've been through some difficulties in my life. Andre Crouch wrote a song that says, through it all, through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to depend on God. I threw it all. I've had some ups and downs. I've had some hills and mountains. I've had some valleys, but by faith, God brought me through. And so we need to listen to the witnesses. Now, listen, let me say this. You can be a witness too. You don't minimize, please don't minimize your story. I don't care how old or young you are. Don't minimize what's gone on in your life because I found out that God is not just the God for the age, but he's God for the young. He's the God of all grace. Amen. And so listen to the witnesses. The witnesses' testimonies will help us. But then he didn't leave it there. We're getting ready to meddle now. Because the writer says here, not just listen to the witnesses, but verse number one says, lay aside every weight. Lay aside the weight. Look at somebody that said, lay aside the weight. Now, let, let, me, let, me, let me tell you what that, let me, let me tell you what that means. Uh, he says, lay aside the weights and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Stop right there. He says, lay aside the weight and the sin that does so easily ensnares us. Lay aside means to put it away. It means to get rid of it. It means to cease doing what one was accustomed to doing. What he's saying is this. There are things in our lives, habits, patterns, behaviors that really are not serving to help us. They are really hindering us. And so he says, listen, lay aside the weight. The weight is that bulk, that burden, that things which hinders you from doing something. And he says, lay that aside. Lay it aside. Now, let me tell you something. Every weight is not a sin. Some things are just not good for you. Now, I don't like that because I want to do what I want to do because I'm grown. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? But, but, but he, here, he says, lay aside the weights. Lay aside those things. Lay aside those things that's burdening you, that's keeping you from running at optimal speed, keeping you from running your race, keeping you from becoming and doing all that God has purposed for you, that's keeping you, that's hindering you. Lay that aside. Then he says, and lay aside the sin too. Lay that aside. Now, this is the thing that I don't like. He said, lay aside the sin. Notice, the sin. The sin which so easily ensnares us. This is your familiar buddy. This is what you do every whatever. Just keep looking straight. Nobody knows I'm talking about you. That's the part I don't like because I, there are some things in my life, there are some things in your life, and he calls them those sins that easily ensnare us. <clears throat> We're always critical, always putting folk down, always negative, 
And I can, my goal is to stand up here and, 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 and keep going until I hit your number. But, but, but you, you know, that, 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 you know I, I, I get high every Friday. <laughs> Lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets you. Pastor, you know. I, I'm a man, I got needs. Lay aside the sin, the, the weight and the sin that does so easily beset you. I'm a woman, I got needs too, Pastor. Lay aside. Oh, it's mighty quiet in here today. And I'm, I'm going to keep looking at the Bible. No, no, he, hear me. I, 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 this, this is, let me, let me talk about this. Uh, you can't live dirty and expect to be confident before God. You, you really can't. You can't live, I'm, I'm just saying, you, you, you just, there's something called a conscience that you, that all of us were born with. And if, we, if you violate your conscience, there should be something on the inside of you say, man, I was wrong about that. And you shouldn't be able to keep going with that. And so what I'm getting at is there are some things in our lives and we know good and well, man, I, I, I don't feel good about that. What we have to do is this, admit it and quit it. You know, admit it and quit it. Say, Lord, I'm sorry, I repent and I and, and quit it and change from that thing. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, <clears throat> this is, I want, I'll go ahead and say this. Sometimes we're involved in sexual relationships outside of marriage. And, um, and what happens is this, we find ourselves ensnared. We're entangled in it. We can't get out of it because sex and, and, um, was designed to reinforce a covenant. And so it begins to tie people together. The, the two become one flesh. And so what happens is this. You are reinforcing an absent covenant. And so therefore that you're tied, you're all tied up, you can't get away from boo. You know what I'm saying? All right. You, you, I'm, I'm just saying what I'm saying. And, and so what happens is this. Uh, that's why the, the Song of Solomon says this. He says, the, the writer of Song of Solomon says, don't awaken love before it's time. Because and I ain't planning to go this way, but I'll say it. <clears throat> God gave you a sex drive. Sex is good. And every, everybody ought to say Amen. Are we all right? We all right? Y'all looking, what did he say? <laughs> Amen. Sex is good. And one of the things we don't want to do is distort it. The enemy, perversion is bad. And so the enemy will come in and use what God meant for good and pervert it. And so what happens is this, we are so, we, some of us have become so accustomed to putting sex in the negative category from a Christian perspective that we don't look at sex as good anymore. But sex is good. It's designed by God. It's for enjoyment. It's for procreation. It's for all those kind of things. But it's supposed to be in an environment called marriage. And so when you start having it outside of marriage, you know you're just out there. And the next thing you know, a little bit of you is tied to this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And you can't d get that stuff out of you because you've given part of you away. All right? And so he says, lay aside that thing. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So, so, so it, it's, it's, and, and you, you want to make sure that you live your life where you feel confident before God. You're not dirty. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and you don't feel, you don't, you, 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 your conscience is clean before God. And if you keep overriding it and overriding it, when you have a need and you want to pray, you don't feel confident that you can pray because your life is condemning you. 
the very thing that you do. And so that's why the writer of Hebrews said, if you're going to run this race, there are some things in your life that you have to lay aside. And he says, I need, I need to be intentional about putting this aside. And I want you to, want to tell you, I want to tell you. That's why he said, don't awaken love before it's time. Once you get that thing woke up. I know that's not good English, but I can just say it like I said. I'm going straight <laughs> Alabama on that. Once you get it awakened, you know, once it's, it's awake, come awake. All right? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I didn't say any of that in the other service. So he says, lay aside. And again, hear me, hear me. My goal isn't condemnation. My goal today is not condemnation of just trying to show you what's going on. And that's, that's why it's hard for you to leave, boo. You know, she, she, she just, you know, you, she just does her thing. And you say, good God, I spent all my money on that woman. I don't know why. <clears throat> she just put it on me. Yeah, she literally did. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> and it's on you. It's on you. That's what I'm talking about. It's on you. You want fleshing. All right? We okay? okay. I, I, that's, <laughs> all right? I'm just, I'm just saying what I'm saying. And that's why when you... <clears throat> hallelujah. When you step outside of the, outside of the boundaries of marriage, you know, it's, it's just, you know, you, you, you're in a territory, an unknown territory, and, and you really, it, it's difficult to navigate because you can't see. You're in darkness, and you're trying to fight the enemy in darkness. That's his domain. Okay? All right. Scripture says, <clears throat> train yourselves to be godly train yourselves. So you have to go un undergo some strict training to be godly. You have to train yourself. I, and and listen, listen, listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. I don't stand up here as a perfect man by no means. I'll tell you, you know, if I had time, I could tell you a laundry list of things that's happened to me. But it's not about me today. It's about you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I'm getting at is this. You train yourself to be godly. I, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I'm a man. I've, I'm attracted to women. Amen. 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 Hear, hear what I'm saying? Amen. And, and uh, but I, you know, coming up, I had to make, you know, I'm, I'm a young believer, and I'm saying, okay, God, I need you to help me. I need you to help me because there's no difference in me and, and Joe Q. Center. You know, and I need, I need God to help me. A uh, girl passed by, you know. <laughs> I, you know, I'm a young man. You, you understand? God, I need you to help me. <laughs> and so, and, 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 what, and what, I had to, what I had to happen, what I had to have God do was to do a work on the inside of me where I wanted to please him where I loved him, where I desired him. And so on my part, it has to be an intentional laying down, a laying down of a relationship that wasn't honoring God. God's not pleased with that, and I have to step away from it. And that's what I got to say about that. <laughs> I didn't intend on spending that much time on that point. But I believe God wants us to be free. One of the things, this is, this is, this is what I'm saying. Um, I, as a believer, as just a, God, I did not want to be a fake Christian. You know what I'm saying? I really want to be authentic in what I did for Jesus. And so, and so I don't want us to be a fake church either. And this is what I'm saying is this. What I found, man, you may be struggling. You may be, you may be man, meaning all mankind, <laughs> girl, too. But you may be having a struggle in a particular area, whatever that thing is. What I found is this. If you keep going to it, if you keep on coming to him, keep on coming to him, keep on coming to him, what happens is this. And you say, God, I need you. I need you. I need you to help me, to change me, to do what needs. You're crying out from the depths of your heart. He hears that cry. He hears that cry. He hears that cry. And what I'm getting at also is this, be honest with him. There's something God uses. You said, lay aside the weight and the sin that does so easily beset me. I like this. I don't want to lay aside. I want to keep doing this, and I need you to help me. I need you to change my want-tos. 
I don't, I don't, I want to do, you know, I, I, and I, I really need your help. I want to please you. I'm sorry because I don't like the way I feel after this thing is done. That's how you know it's sin. I'm convicted on the inside. I don't want to, and nor do I want to get to a place where I'm so, I, I'm so accustomed to disobeying God that I always override my conscience, and now I have no sense of what's right and wrong. And so, God, I need you. Please help me. Please help me. And I'm crying out to you. Please help me. Please help me. And what I found is that's, a, that's something called transformation. That's what we're in the business of. That's why our mission statement, we're transforming all people into fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. All I'm saying is you keep on going. You keep on coming to God. Keep on coming to God. And what happens is he begins to transform you. He begins to change you from the inside out out. It's not just putting on an external behavior, trying to wear a long skirt and all this kind of stuff, because long skirts come up just like short ones. I, you hear what I'm saying? And so it's not all of this, and you, if, I'm trying to, if I'm not trying to be graphic or sensational today, and so I just really want to talk to you, uh, 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 but, but what I'm saying is this, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to do something on the inside of you where you say, God, I want to be real with you. I want, you to, you, I, I want to be authentic with you. I'm not what I need to be, but then you're going to see progress in your life. Well, you'll say, I'm, oh, look at that. I didn't look as long this time. <laughs> You're going <laughs> to, amen, we're making progress. Praise party. <laughs> then, you, you know, you take your next step. Wow, you know, I, it, 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 you begin to wonder, I wonder if she's saved. Look at that. I'm thinking about her differently. Oh, I'm seeing her totally different. Now, she's beautiful. You're not blind. But what I'm getting at is this. You allow God to transform you, and your life will begin to change. And hear me, hear me. Oh, God. Your lust won't go away just because you got married. It won't. It won't. It won't. The thing, you, you, can, you can stand up here, we're going to have a wedding today. That's why we got these beautiful steps and all this kind of stuff. And what a sermon to lead into a wedding. Lord, have mercy. So anyway, you, just because you got married, it's not going to change the internal conditions of your heart. You can just, you can just be a married watch. <laughs> you just married and doing it. Are you understanding? So what I'm getting at is this. As you and I come to God, he says, listen, I need you to watch the witnesses. Listen to the witnesses. There are some folks in this church that will share their story with you. You may, I know, I know we were on sex, but whatever the thing, issue is, I don't have time to go through a laundry list of stuff. But there, we've got some of everything in here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That'll be willing to tell you their story and how. So listen to the witnesses and then lay aside the weight. And then here's the next thing. Here's, can we go on? Run your race. Come on, say run your race. That's, now, I can't run somebody else's race. Where I get off is trying to be you. You know what I'm saying? He's you're just trying to be somebody else. He says, lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset us. And then he says, and run, run the race that's set before you. Meaning God has charted a path for your life, and you've got to run that race. Now, hear me, hear me. How do you do that? Run your race, stay in your lane, and run at your pace. Let me say that again. Run your race, stay in your your lane, and run at your pace. Again, run your race. Stay in your lane and run at your pace. I can't be like sister so, brother so-and-so, or sister so-and-so, and all. No, 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 no. I've got to run. 
I've got to stay in and I've got to run at my pace. So I need to run the race that's set before me. I need to make sure I'm running that race. If this, listen to me, you have grace for your race. You have grace, come on, say, I have grace for my race. If I get in there and try to do some of the stuff, no, 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 I'm going to mess up because I can't handle the stuff like you can handle your stuff, like your race. I can't do that. Let me give you, let's take it out of this, out of this arena. Um, uh, um, there are some people that are given, uh, I'll give you an example, just a real simple example. Uh, uh, um, my wife types real fast. Our administrative staff here, they can type really, really fast. I mean, they, you know, fast, fast. She can type faster than she, than you can speak almost. Elder Mike types real fast. But now, you give me the document. Say that one more time. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because that's not my right. You know, I, can, I do what I need to do. I get by. You're going to get the document not as fast. <laughs> Are you understanding? L- 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 oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Even regarding, um, like, I, you have to look at the stages of your life and recognize which stage you're in because your pace is going to change based upon your stage. Now, let me just say what I'm saying. You cannot do what you used to do when you get older. Hear what I'm, hear what I'm talking about. You can still do it, but the recovery time is going to be a little bit longer. You understand? You can still, yeah, you know, you know, I, let's, let's go run around here. Let's go do this and do this. Okay, hold on. Just wait a minute. We're running out. I got to run my race. And so what, we, what many times we mess up is because we fail to realize the season of our life and we don't adjust the pace accordingly. Amen. Now, let me flip that. There are some young couples that would try to look at an older couple and try to see all the stuff that they've accumulated. You're talking about 40 years of stuff. You can't go out and buy 40 years of stuff in the first two years of your marriage. You know what that's called? Dead. You look at, you know, my brother did this. He, he, he had a young, young guy that he was mentoring, and uh, he was fresh out of college, and he said, yeah, you know, man, this is what I want to do. I want to get me, and he named this luxury car. I want to get me a this. I want to get me a that. And he said, you know, I'm going to drive, and I'm going to do this. And he said, okay, all right, let me show you something. He said, come ride with me. And he said, I want you to show you something. I want you to show you. We're going to look at every person that had that car that you look at, that, that you want. How old do you think they are? Mm-hmm. They were, are they older? You think he's older than you? Yeah. Do you think he's older than you? Yes. Do you, in other words, give your career time to develop. Right. Run your race at your pace, and you got to stay in your lane. Mm-hmm. And that's free. All right, let me go on. Let me go on. Let me go on. Let me go on. Okay. 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 This is funny. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. Help me, Jesus, and stay where I need to stay. That's why. Your old self, you can't be messing with that little young girl. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> you up there trying to act like you know you like oh Lord my elbow I'm gonna be all right in just a minute. <laughs> all right, that's enough. That's all I and that's what I have to say about that. This is not turning out, Corey, like I thought it was gonna turn out at all. 
<laughs> All right. So, 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 I told you. <laughs> I told you. We've got to listen to the witnesses. We've got to lay aside the weights, and we've got to run our race. All right, that's all I've told you so far. We've got to listen to the witnesses. We've got to lay aside, and then we've got to run our race. Run our race. Here's the last thing. You've got to look to Jesus. You've got to look to Jesus. Because he said here, Lord, thank you. There's a landing. Looking unto Jesus, verse number two, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So now, when he says look to Jesus, why are we looking to Jesus? Because Jesus, listen to this, is your pioneer. Jesus is your perfecter, and Jesus is the pattern. Jesus is the pioneer, Jesus is the perfecter, and Jesus is the pattern. What do you mean he's the pioneer? It says looking to Jesus because he's the author and the finisher. He's the author of your faith. He, he's the author, meaning he started this thing. When you say author there, he's the initiator. He's the pioneer. It means he's the pathfinder. He's the lead. He's the champion that's gone before you and shown you how to do it. He's the author. He's the one who put faith in you. Without him, you wouldn't even have any faith. And so he's the one who set the course of faith for you to follow. So I need to keep my eyes on Jesus, keep my eyes on him, how he handles certain things. So now, not only is he the pioneer, but he's also the perfecter, meaning he's the author and the finisher. He's the perfecter of your faith. Perfect means he's the one who brings us to the intended goal, meaning there's a goal that he wants to bring your faith to, my faith to, and so he brings us to that intended goal. He perfects that which concerns me. And also, he's the pattern. He's the pattern of endurance. So if you ever wanted to endure, if you ever drew, grew a little weary, look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Because it says, who endured, look, let's look at the text. Verse, verse 3, for consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. And so you need to look to Jesus lest you become discouraged. How did Jesus continue to endure? Here it is. Back up to verse 2, and I'm through. Who for the joy that was set before him? Who for the joy that was set before him? I told you this is called run your race with joy. Joy that was set before him gave him the ability to endure. I need to illustrate this. Can I illustrate it real quickly? I need some people to help me. Um, uh, I need somebody, Daryl. Yeah, both of you guys, come here. And uh, here is Daryl's going to be God. All right, and uh, 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 you're going to be the Holy Spirit. Elder Walt, come and be Jesus for me. All right, now. Elder T, if you, can you help me as well? Okay. She said, I guess. <laughs> All right. Elder T is going to be Mary. All right. Give me one more. Tell me, uh, I'm slow. He's going to be the cross. The cross. Right. Give me somebody else. I need somebody else. You're going to be my resurrection. All right. And he's going to be uh, the redeemed man. And I need joy. I need joy. <laughs> Come on, joy. So, before, here we go. Here we go. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit have a meeting before time was because they knew that man was going to fail. They knew that Billy Johnson was going to fail. They knew that whatever your name is is going to fail. 
He knew that Adam was going to fall. And so God loves man. He wanted man to be with him. And so what he did was this. He, they had a meeting beforehand, and it says he's going to need to be redeemed. And so the only way to redeem him is to have the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. So the son spoke up and said, this is what I'm going to do. Father, I'm willing to go and pay the price for man's sin. And so I'm going to pay this price for man's sin so that when it comes time, he can be fully redeemed. All right? They ended the meeting. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is all done. And it says they finished the meeting with joy. With joy. It's joy. Now, joy now has to go down here at the end and face this way. Here is the Son, Jesus, coming through time. Because the prophets couldn't do it. The law couldn't do it. Nothing else could redeem us. And so he says, a body you've created for me. I come in the volume of the book to do your will. And so he was birthed through a virgin called Mary. So here he is showing up on the scene. You're Mary today, all right? <laughs> all right, Mary, Mary, Mary. All right, now, now. So shows up on the scene, shows up on the scene. And then he has to live a perfect life. He had to fulfill every requirement of the law. He got to a place where he knew, okay, my time has come. Wait a minute, I'm running into some difficulty because I know what's in the cup. He's in the garden praying, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me, please. But then he finally yielded and said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And so, wait a minute, what's keeping him going? He has to look down and he sees joy. Because when you look in the book of Hebrews, it says, who for the joy that was set before him, here he is, endured the cross. He went through the cross. He was buried in a borrowed tomb, stayed there three days and three nights. And on the third day, resurrection power began to hit his body. He said, if I lay my body down, I'm going to pick it up again. And so he was resurrected. What kept him going? Joy. And so now, what joy? The joy of seeing this man who had no way of getting back to the Father redeemed. Now, with joy, he brings this redeemed man back to the Father and say, here's your father. Here is your daddy. If any man comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. I don't care where you've been, what's going on with you. He is a redeemer. Yes, God. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And guess what he's doing now? Guess what he's doing now, Jesus, 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 Jesus. The scripture says he sat down by the right hand of the Father. What's going on? He's waiting. He's making intercession now on your behalf, wanting you to keep walking by faith. Keep on going. Keep on doing. Keep on moving forward. He's ever living to make intercession for you. Hallelujah. So, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to run your race with joy. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, guys. You can be seated. No wonder the enemy is after your joy. He's trying to load you down with all kinds of obstacles and burdens because he knows that the joy of the Lord is your strength. The strength comes from the joy. It enables you to endure whatever it is you have to endure. When you get joy on the inside, you say, I can make it. I can make it. I can make it. Ladies and gentlemen, run your race. Stay in your lane. But make sure you finish with joy. Amen.
Amen. Father, we praise you. Give him a big old praise today. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes. 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 No wonder he told you to lay aside all that stuff. Why? Well, I got to finish. I, I got, I'm going somewhere in my life. I've got a destiny to reach. I'm bigger than what I'm in right now. I'm bigger than this. I right now, this is I, I'm all encumbered and I gotta get free from this because I weren't I was not built to be bound. I was built to be free. Amen. Amen. Listen, I know we talked about some things today, and I'm not getting ready by any stretch of the imagination. Call out, call everybody up here, and let's have a big old, uh, you know, repenting time openly before everybody. But I do want us to take a moment because I don't believe the Holy Spirit would allow us to do things and we not have the opportunity to just right where we are in our seats. Would you take a moment and bow? your head right where you are and you talk to the Lord Lord we come to you today first of all kind of nervous because the truth of the matter is we aren't a, we're so used to covering we're so used to having to cover ourselves. We don't know what to do when we're open, but we do know that there's freedom available in you. Lord, we named a number of things today, hindrances, weights, sins, and the truth of the matter is, Lord, we struggle. We struggle being free from a number of things, and you by your power are the only one, is the only one who can set us free. And so today, would you set us free? Set us free. Would you change us from the inside? We're not proud of some things we've done. We're not proud of uh, how this seems like we trip up over the same thing. Lord, please, would you have mercy upon us and give us joy? Would you cause us to begin to even change the pattern of our lives where we're just conditioned? We're going to go off. That's, the kind of, that's our default. Lord, please let that not be our default. Would you change us, transform us? Do it in us, Lord, right now. We just open our hearts to you. And we don't know how, but we know that we can trust your love. So thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for doing what you need to do in us because we want to be more like you, Lord. So we trust you with this work now. In the name of Jesus. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what's true. It's yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come and experience transforming worship at New Covenant Christian Ministries. We have two locations. Our West Campus is located at 1760 Phillips Road, Lithonia, Georgia. Our East Campus is located at 14147 Highway 278, Covington, Georgia. For more information, please visit our website at www.newcov.org.